Before I get started with this story, um, I have to give a huge shout out to um Corey Truth TV because he tagged me. Um, or, I'm sorry, Corey the Truth 87 for tagging me in this post because he's one of the few people that I've seen on social media who follows me and I follow them who is really giving light to the story that definitely deserves much. And I do mean way more attention that it's receiving. But, um, in this image is a picture of a woman by the name of Saisha Mercado. And she was a contestant on American Idol way back. Um, like they said, um, about 13 years ago, I forgot what season they said she was on. Oh, she was on the, uh, season seven of American Idol. I can't say if I remember seeing her or not, because at that time I still did watch the show because that's when the show was actually still in its prime, still relatively watchable. But I can't remember if I saw her or not. It was a lot of people that came in on that show. But they said she made it like she was like the third place person. So she she got pretty far. She almost won the competition, as a matter of fact. But, um... I didn't really come on here to talk about that. I came on here to talk about the situation involving her and her son. In which she posted this video that you see the screenshot of that went viral. And she basically was saying how she went to take her child to the hospital, you know, for medical reasons. She took their child to John Hopkins. And they said that, you know, her child would have to stay overnight, you know, for observation and everything like that. But one night turned into over 50 days and nights. So this woman actually took her child to the hospital back in, I believe, February. And she has yet to see her child since then. Um, Her son's name is Amin Ra. That's her child's name. Then he's the boy is not even a year old. Like he's still fairly fresh into this world. And she put out this video right here. Um, I'm not going to play it. What I will do is I'll leave the link and you can watch it for yourself. It's just like really hard to listen to. Like you can tell like she is going through it um, right now. And she basically has labeled this as a legal kidnapping. That's what she has called it. And I'm going to actually read what she posted on her Instagram account. You can actually see some of it right here on the thumbnail. But I have the whole thing sitting right um, in front of me. And I'm going to go ahead and read what she said. She said, they kidnapped my baby. Peace, everyone. I know it's been a while since I posted and I never, never could I have imagined returning back to this platform with news like this. And the reason why she said that is because the last time she posted something on her page was last year. And if you look at her page, it's like a complete contrast of what she's posting now. Because if you look on her social media, on her Instagram page, her p- post before what happened with her child was really light and vibrant and, and colorful and happy and smiles. There's even a video clip that she posted of her singing her ABCs to her um son in her own version of the song. But now her page looks more sad and depressing because of what she's going through right now. On March 11th, my son was stolen from me. I was surrounded by CPS and armed officers with racially charged questions and false claims that we refused a B12 shot during our hospital stay to get my son fluids. Ra was transitioning from extended breastfeeding to the bottle. My son was placed in a white foster home, bypassing our qualified relatives for placement. This is legalized kidnapping. So they put her child in foster care. Without the consent of her and the child's father. And they didn't even put her son with relatives of hers or the son's father. They put him with complete strangers. I can't even explain how traumatizing it has been to be forcibly removed from my proudest creation in this life. My son, my pride and joy, Amin Ra. The police officer dismissively said it's just one night, but that one night turned into 53, 53 nights without being able to sing him to sleep and kiss his forehead. Good night. There are literally no words that can express. I'll have to relive that day every day, every moment leading up to the decision to take him to the hospital. 
that specific hospital. And if you want to know what hospital she's talking about, she's talking about John Hopkins. I don't think she I don't know if she mentions it in her post, but when I was looking up articles, that hospital came up and we know that John Hopkins has a very sordid history with black people. And this actually is close to home because John Hopkins is located in Maryland. It's actually in Baltimore. And when I think of John Hopkins, I keep thinking of Henrietta Lacks. And those of you who know the story about her know that it's a lot of racial undertones or overtones, to be honest, with that story right there. So this story is actually a lot closer than I think, than, you know, than I had anticipated. She goes on to say black women are so unprotected in this system and I refuse to be silent and allow this to happen to another black woman or child. Today, I am taking a stand to fight back. I will not be silent. I need my tribe more than ever right now to stand with me to bring our baby home to hashtag bring Ra home. We demand to hold those who are responsible accountable. Our son should never have been taken from us. And I refuse to let our story go unheard and unseen. We have hired a lawyer and started a campaign to help with our mounting legal fees, necessary expenses for medical specialists and team members that will help us fight back. It will take a big backing for us to fight against a big system that is doing everything in its power to destroy us, to stand up against the system and its way of thinking and law steep in colonial times. We need your support. She said, click the link in my bio to share and support. Help me bring my baby back home. Hashtag bring Ra home. Now, what's very, in- what's very saddening about this situation is that if it wasn't for Corey truth 87 and the wrestler Sasha Banks, this story would not have really gotten the traction that it has gotten. And even with that, it still hasn't made its rounds. I kid you not. When I tell you, I have not seen any local news outlet talk about this story. Not one. I only heard it from one person, maybe two, and the one that sent me the story. And that was it. If it wasn't for them, I would not have known this story had even existed. Like, this is very sad. Like, imagine you as a mother have your child literally taken away from you when you thought one thing and it was completely different, who knows where that child is at right now? Who knows what they're doing to that child? She has been without her baby for 50 plus 53 plus days. Now this post that she made that I just read was posted on May 4th. That was my 32nd birthday. That's crazy. That like it's crazy to think about while I'm out celebrating my 32nd year on this earth, this woman literally has to come online and do a video talking about how her son has been away from her, legally kidnapped for 53 plus days. Like that had to take a lot of strength for her to actually come on to camera after so many days have passed and address this. And you know, I thought it was also interesting that she used a black and white filter to, you know, so that because remember when I was telling you about on her Instagram page, a lot of her pictures are real colorful and vibrant. And then the next time she comes online on Instagram, this is what she posts and it's real sad, depressing. And it's a black and white photo. Well, video. And I don't and I looked through her page and I don't think I really saw anything else on her page. That was in black and white, unless it was a photography or a model style picture that she may have taken. I don't know. I just pay. I just pay attention to detail and stuff like that. But I hope that this woman is able and, you know, and the father, for that matter, are able to get their son back because no parent deserves to go through that. That has to be mental and physical torture that she's going through right now. And the thing is, they don't even really explain as to why they did it. It's it's just that they just did it. And you heard what she said. She said she was hesitant to take her son to the hospital. And notice she specifically said that hospital. 
And when I found out it was John Hopkins, I, I said, then she knows the history about John Hopkins. She probably felt like, you know, maybe I could do what I can with my son naturally, but then realized she couldn't. And um, she said, OK, I'll just go to the hospital and see what they can do. And the one time she lets her guard down with the hospital. This is what happens. This is what happened. But I hope that she definitely gets all the help and the attention that this story needs, because it definitely needs to be put out there in a more bigger way than how it's being broadcasted, because there's only a couple of articles written up about this story. And I think because the rest of Sasha Banks put something out there and she has a following, that's what helped push the story even more. So in a way, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't even know that this story even exists. But um, I'm going to post the link to all of her information down in the um description so you can go and support. She has a GoFundMe page. Um, The goal is $50,000 as of right now. It's currently at 17,911 of a $50,000 goal. I'm clicking on that thinking that she was going to reach that, that that goal had already been shattered, but unfortunately it has not. And it needs to be, but, um, yeah, we're going to have to, you know, stay updated with this particular story because this is absolutely, this is sad. And I hope that she gets her child back and nothing has happened to him because like, you know, and like I said, I know it's rattling her brain because it's been over, it's been over 53 days since she's last seen her son. They tell her one thing and she goes back to get him and, you know, he's not there and they threw him into a foster home. And then what they're probably going to try to do is they're probably going to try to make it seem like her and um her partner who she's with, the child's father, aren't good parents. Because remember, a lot of the times whenever a lot of parents, especially a black parent, try to uh do things holistically or naturally or away from modern medicine. Because I think that's what that's where she's at with this. Then they'll try to label you as crazy. And why are you going against the stuff that we have or that you are messing with these kids? You're not a good parent. You're abusive and everything like that. That's the lane that, that that's the vibe I'm getting from this. And they probably felt that she was not a good mother. And why are they going to try to spin this and try to say that she's unfit mother and we were protecting the child? Man, it's just like. If it's one thing, and the thing is, I could never relate to this because I'm not a woman. I could never be a mother, but I can just, you know, imagine, or I couldn't even imagine the pain that she as a mother, especially a mother to a small child is going through right now. Because like, she is like, it's almost like she's having more days away from her child than she's having with, but hopefully she and, you know, her partner can get or find a way to get their child back one way or another. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments and I'll talk to you in the next one.